By this point, you should have at least the events calendar and the Eventbrite tickets add-on active on your site. You could also have Events Calendar Pro, but since it's not required to run the Eventbrite tickets add-on, you don't have to, and I'm not going to have it active in this screencast. I'm running just the Events Calendar and Eventbrite tickets on this site, and I'm on the dashboard. Now to set up my first ticket, I'm going to go to set up a new event. And anybody who's familiar with the plugin will know that that means coming over to the admin sidebar, hitting events, add new. And when you do so, you're taken to the familiar add new event screen. Now for anybody who doesn't know how to do this, we've covered it elsewhere in documentation, so I'm going to blaze through this pretty quickly. Just know that if you're familiar with the plugin, it's not like you have to reinvent the wheel here. Setting up your ticketed events is just adding a few extra steps on top of the basic event creation process, but it's not a new process entirely. I'm going to give my event its title. Add a description, give it a couple categories, and then I want to select when my event is actually going to take place. I could add a venue and an organizer. In the interest of time here, I'm going to skip these, and I'm going to scroll down to just underneath the organizer details where I can register this event with eventbrite.com. The two radio buttons are going to be here. It's going to default to no. You just want to change it to yes, and you'll see that in doing so, it brings up a whole bunch of new fields for you specifically fields related to setting up your first ticket. Now, any event that is published on Eventbrite needs to have at least one ticket associated with it. So if we're creating this event for the goal of passing it over to Eventbrite, we might as well set up that ticket now so that when the event is passed to Eventbrite, it has the ticket in place. That's what the system is asking you to do here, and that's why all these fields are required of you. The asterisk does indicate that it's required, so if you attempt to skip one and submit, the connection with Eventbrite will not be made, you'll see a warning message, and you'll be asked to correct the mistake. Now the name of my first ticket, let's say it's going to be Seniors because I want to invite seniors to attend my event. For the description for that ticket, I'm going to describe what seniors get and what this ticket is. The date to start ticket sales is going to be when tickets go on sale. It should be after today, but before when the event actually takes place. The date to end ticket sales should be after when tickets initially went on sale, but again, before the event actually takes place. Next up is the type, where I need to set whether or not I want this to be set price, where everybody pays the same amount, donation-based, where users can donate whatever they deem appropriate, or free, so that attendees can just come for free, don't have to pay anything. Well, my event costs money, and I'm going to leave it as set price accordingly. The cost specifically is $15, and we have 150 tickets available. Now for the service fee, Eventbrite does charge a service fee for any ticket sales made using their service. You can't bypass that by using this plugin, so what you need to do now is set whether or not you want that ticket fee to be baked into the charge, which would mean include service fee in price of $15, or whether you want the service fee on top of that $15 charge. Basically, by adding the second one, you know your users won't pay more than $15, whereas if you select the first one, they're going to be paying $15 plus a little more for the fee. I'm more comfortable with knowing that they're just paying $15 even, so I'm going to select the second, and then I need to select what specific payment methods we're going to accept here. We have online options and offline options. Really, I'm mostly concerned with accepting online, so I want to select PayPal, and when I do so, you'll see the little field to add my PayPal email address does appear. And I can also accept a couple offline methods if I wish to, just by checking these boxes. I'm not too concerned about that, though, since I know my audience and my attendees are mostly online. So I've got my one payment method accepted. Remember, you have to, you have to select at least one. And all the rest of these details are looking pretty good. I'm satisfied with this event. So now all I need to do is decide whether I want it to be draft on Eventbrite or live on Eventbrite. And we'll focus more on this in a subsequent screencast. But just know that this is really the process. You've just set up your first ticket here. And now, depending on what you selected from the drop down right here, when you go up to the top and either save or publish, this event will be sent over to Eventbrite, and the ticket you just created here will live over there in the new event you've created on that side as well. Stay tuned for the next in this series of Eventbrite Primer screencasts, and thanks for watching so far.